My name is Shinji Fallon. Once the engineer at Infonet, I was a part of their machine. And yes, I stood by as lives were destroyed. But no more. I will end this. My only hope is to know what they know. For that, I must follow in their footsteps and journey to the heart of the megastructure. I built my own Denzel, one beyond their control. I've manufactured Denzels before, but this one was different. I'd be hard pressed to suggest another gaming genre that makes me sit up and take notice like Metroidvanias do. It's a genre that keeps on giving, producing hit after hit wherein even the not so great ones bring at least something to the table. And this year we've seen a few, from The Last Faith and Tevi to Convergence, a League of Legends story and the roguelike Astral Ascent. But one of the best in a year of bangers has to be Cookie Cutter, Subcult's hyper-violent revenge story. As Cyborg Cherry, your goal is to track down the evil talking heads who kidnapped your creator and left you in pieces. Rebuilt with new parts and an appetite for violence that would make Kratos call a timeout, Cherry sets off on an odyssey across various alien landscapes, post-apocalyptic wastelands and industrial death traps. Some of the level designs make little sense if examined closely. I mean, factory owners of the future sure love to put massive whirling blade traps in public areas. But if you come in looking for context, then you're in the wrong place. Arguably, the violence is what Cookie Cutter does best. A 2D action game in the vein of Dead Cells, it occasionally falls foul of the hidden bad guy conundrum where two or more identical enemies appear as one thanks to the 2D plane, and parrying one leaves you open to the others. It's also seriously messy, with so many mini explosions of sparks and gears and brains and bowels at a given time that it's hard to make out protagonist Cherry's adorably psychotic facial expressions, but it's also one of the most brutally cathartic combat systems of the year. Cherry's standard kick combo is satisfying in itself when you add in a frankly huge amount of additional attacks, traversal moves and void powers it becomes a bombastic ballet of boots, blades and body parts as you batter bionic baddies into beaten bags of blood and bolts. The combat feels effortlessly smooth and it's aided no end by the ability to bounce enemies off walls and ceilings, smash them into the scenery and catapult them into environmental hazards. While Cookie Cutter doesn't do much to break the mould, what it does with the standard Metroidvania structure is impressive. As you make your way through various themed biomes, you'll come across teleporters which I at first took to be too widespread. However, you charge through the area so quickly and the checkpoints are so well placed that you don't ever really need more teleporters. Here and there you'll come across items that need returning to their owners, like the lens for an old guy's eye or someone's head that they misplaced. These side objectives mix with the overall story so that you won't know what's critical path and what isn't, and it won't matter because it all flows so well. For example, I met the owner of the missing head long before I found the actual head, and I don't remember him asking me to find it. Some of the characters are other robots, whereas some are grotesque mutants. One is a giant ambulatory penis with muscles like a rock. Hell, Cherry's sidekick and guide through the game is a floating robotic lady garden called Regina. So yeah, it's that kind of game, but weirdly, it doesn't beat you over the head with it. A lot of the humour comes from Cherry's sassy, snarky attitude, which stays just on the right side of obnoxious. Her interactions with Raz, the guy who rebuilt her, always have a certain sweetness to them. Progression is handled by finding pickups that give Cherry new buffs or new powers entirely. Combat abilities usually draw from the void and often double as traversal moves, giving her things like a ground slam, air dash, range attack and what can only be described as a super cyan style area of effect attack. But there's also a special weapon that lets Cherry cut down certain walls and one incredibly cool device that you need to assemble from scattered parts. So, ironically, Cookie Cutter stands out as something that feels quite unique. The hand-drawn art and fluid animations give it the air of a game more expensive than it probably was, and there's enough attitude, humour and surprises in it to keep fans of the genre glued to the screen. If anything, my only real issue comes from the energy management. Cherry builds energy by attacking and depletes it using special abilities. She also uses it to repair herself when damaged, but if you run out after a hectic fight and the next room has an obstacle that requires use of an ability, you'll have to go and find enemies to kill to replenish it. And as they don't respawn unless you die and are sent to a checkpoint, sometimes your only option is to find a teleporter, warp to a different area and then come back refilled. It's a bit of a pace killer and would benefit from a slow regen of Void, which you can unlock later, by the way, but which you won't have for some time. Time. 
Overall, Cookie Cutter is a fantastic example of a game made by devs that truly understand their genre. Everything is geared to keep you playing, always unlocking new powers, resources and upgrades while charging through diverse locales at considerable speed. The bosses present enough challenge to test you without frustrating you, while there are enough puzzles in the environment to keep you scratching your head and punching the air for hours. That being said, the big orbs you move around with a void fist can get in the bin. Most of what Cookie Cutter sets out to do though, it manages with flying colours. Despite a few minor missteps, it's easily one of the best Metroidvania games of this year, and if you're a fan of the genre, it's an absolute must play, and for that reason, I'm going to score it a 9 out of 10. Hi there, hope you enjoyed that review of Cookie Cutter. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. Maybe tag the bell icon too so you're kept up to date with everything you post going forward. And if you're going to pick up this game, do let us know what you think of it in the comments. We'd like to hear from you guys. And if you want to support us via Patreon, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash Geek. In the meantime, I've been Mick Fraser and you guys have been lovely. Bye.